The rocker arm transfers motion from the camshaft lobe to the engine valve. It typically pivots at the center, with one side connected to the camshaft and the other side connected to the valve. Because the rocker arm has different lengths on each side of the pivot, this difference is expressed as the rocker arm ratio. To determine the rocker arm ratio, divide the distance from the pivot to the valve side by the distance from the pivot to the camshaft side. Using this ratio, along with the camshaft lobe lift, we can calculate the total valve movement. Let's take a look at an example. If the rocker arm measures 0.750 inches from the pivot to the camshaft side and 1.250 inches from the pivot to the valve side, calculate A, the rocker arm ratio. We'll worry about questions B and C afterwards. To create our rocker arm ratio, we take the distance from the pivot to the valve side, which happens to be 1.250, and write that as a ratio to the length of the pivot to the camshaft side. So I'll represent that as 1.250 inches to 0 0.750 inches. And you're more than welcome to write this as a fraction instead. From here, we want to convert this ratio into a unit ratio, whereby the camshaft side, in particular 0 0.750, becomes a 1. And we can do that by dividing both sides by the value itself. So if we divide both sides by 0 0.750, this and this will cancel out. And on the left side, we will simply divide those two values. 1.250 divided by 0 0.750, that amounts to roughly 1.67. So we have a new ratio that is 1.67 to 1. And be mindful that this ratio is unitless. So 1.67 to 1 has no units at this point. That right there is the rocker arm ratio. And in question B, we're asked, calculate the total valve movement if the camshaft lobe is 0 0.290. Assume zero valve lash. In a previous video, we learned how to calculate the camshaft lobe lift. Here it's given to us. And the valve lash value here, which we have to assume is zero, is the measurement of the small gap between the rocker arm and the valve. So for simplicity, we're making that value equal to zero. What we do to find the total valve movement here is first write the unit ratio you found as a fraction and make it proportional to another fraction. Remember that the top value represented the pivot to the valve side and the bottom represented the pivot to the camshaft side. So in our new fraction, we will write down 0 0.290 at the bottom so that it's consistent. And at the top, that value will be unknown to us. And what we're looking for is that value of x. And don't forget, that's in inches. So to find x, we cross multiply. That's how you solve proportions. And when you cross multiply, you'll end up with an x value that is equal to 0 0.29 inches times 1.67. So the 1.67 acts as a multiplier to whatever your camshaft lobe lift happens to be. So if we go into our calculator and take 0 0.290, multiply it by 1.67, we end up getting a value that is roughly 0 0.48. 0 0.48 inches is our total valve movement. And finally, for question C, we're asked to calculate the total valve movement if a camshaft lobe measures 29.00 millimeters and the base circle measures 23.00 millimeters, assume zero valve lash. This question ties in what we learned about calculating the camshaft lobe lift in our previous video to what we're doing right now. And so here we're told that the entire camshaft lobe is 29.00 millimeters and the base circle is 23.00 millimeters. We perform this exact same calculation in that previous video. If we subtract these two values, we get 6.00 millimeters. The only difference between this question and what we did in part B is that we have to calculate this value before eventually multiplying it to 1.67, which was what we did in question B after setting up a proportion. So I'll take 1.67, multiply it to 6.00 millimeters, and that will give us our total valve movement. So taking those two values, 1.67 times 6.00, we end up with a value of 10.02, which is already to two decimal places. So again, you could set up the proportion the same way I did in question B, or you can simply take that value and multiply it to the 1.67, which we found earlier. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comment section below.
Thank you for watching.